hello, hello, Phoenix 1.8 RC. So the release candidate has been out. Uh, I'm going to look at a blog post from March 30th, and I want to just kind of go over it in, the, in this video. We're just going to go over the main highlights there. There's some really cool stuff. Uh, and then hopefully in the future, I might do deeper dives into certain sections of it. So let's dive into it. So the first thing is that it comes with Daisy UI now. So I think some people are like all in on Tailwind, like Phoenix using Tailwind by default. And, uh, you know, so we I'm included in those people, by the way. I, I don't mind it. And I know there's, it's kind of easy to change. It's sort of the idea, but I haven't had to do that. So uh, don't take it from experience. This is just what I've heard. Um, but Daisy UI seems interesting. I've never used it, but it seems cool that we can kind of lean into building things more quickly by default. So that, that is a cool thing. I recommend checking out Daisy UI. I, I was looking at the website. There's some pretty neat stuff. Um, so, you know, uh, if you're building a new Phoenix app, this kind of helps you get kickstarted quickly. If you already have an existing one, you probably can ignore this. Uh, it's, I don't think it'll affect you. Um, the second thing that came out is Magic Link uh, passwordless authentication. And the, cool, the interesting thing here is by default. I don't know how I feel about this one. You know, people have different uh, experiences with, with passwordless authentication. Sometimes I hate having to go to my email all the time. Uh, sometimes, you know, I don't mind it. I don't know. The interesting thing is it's by default, but you can, and I like that they highlight it here. If you're a password enthusiast, don't fret. You know, you, you can configure it to, um, to use the email password flow. Uh, but that's just kind of a notice, uh, you know, Phoenix Gen Auth now does the um, passwordless authentication by default. I do think it's cool that it's included because I've wanted this before for some scenarios and it's nice not to have to roll it on your own. So really cool thing to be added there. A big thing, I think big, I don't know, maybe others think differently, is this scopes for data access and authorization patterns, right? So this is something you can have in your old code base. You probably do if you have a big app that supports multiple I don't know, clients or, or something like that. You typically have scopes and you need those in order to know what, you know, like what kind of, you, you know, users you're querying for or what kind of posts you're querying for, whatever it is, right? You, you kind of want to scope that down based on who is accessing your application. So this is just a, I guess, a pattern really that comes out of the box. And there's probably some helpers around it. I haven't delved deeply into it. I think the big thing here is that there's this new My App Account Scope data structure that will get generated. Now, again, I think this 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 is based on configuration. So if you look at down here, there's integration with generators, you can configure it. And that way, when you create a, you know, use a generator, it would use the scope by default. Um, but I also think you can probably add this into your app if you want it. Again, if you already have an existing app, maybe you want to uh, dive into this, maybe not, I don't know. It, it has its own guide. Uh, so you can definitely take a look at that. Um, but the, if you're thinking, well, how does this work? It's it's a struct, right? It's a struct. So they have a good, great examples here. This is a live view, for example. And I believe, I don't know if it's coming the session. Somehow, they probably have a plug somewhere that's turning it into assigns. But now you have a, the current scope and the assigns. This is what I would expect. And now, if you realize all your context functions, all your context modules need to take the scope as the first argument. So this kind of becomes the token that you are going to be passing around to all your context function, functions. And uh, you know you can see it here too, so that you know what scope you're in, right? And so um, if you scroll down, they don't show the other side of this, but that's that's the idea, or, or it is right here. Never mind. Uh, right, list posts before this would be a zero arity function. Now it takes a scope, and this is a cool thing, right? Where you can see, hey, the scope, what user ID am I getting the post for, right? So that kind of thing you probably already support it in some capacity. I've had apps where we pass the user as the first argument or things like that, but it's kind of cool they have a scope. It's kind of a first class thing um, that is that, that can be defaulted. And so the more you have that in Phoenix apps, the more you can move around some other Phoenix apps and kind of kind of use that. Uh, the other thing they did is streamline onboarding. Now, this seems to me like a, a, a few things uh, as I was reading this blog post. So, you know, worth taking a look at. But one of the things is the core components seem to have been trimmed down. And that I understand why I several times I generate Phoenix apps and I'm like, well, I kind of want these core components and not these ones. And it's not a big deal to delete some of them. Uh, but I think this is feedback uh, from from what I read here is feedback that they received that, you know, people didn't want all these like core components, they just wanted some of these things. So they've simplified that I did check at the Phoenix diff for this. And sure enough, there's a f there's fewer uh, core components, you see the modal here, this was in one seven, one eight apps no longer generate the modal. Um, I think some other things as well. 
uh, flash group and stuff like that. So they, they did that. It seems ideally to make it easier to onboard. I don't know. This is a streamlined onboarding portion. So I think that's the, the, the reasoning there. And uh, But I think some of those things will come with the generators, which is kind of what they're talking about here. So as you use the generators, it brings those things with it, but maybe not so many core components out of the box. Uh, and I think they changed a few guides. The context guide has been broken apart into a few separate guides. I think context continue to be sometimes confusing, I think, to people. So maybe that's, I think that's a helpful thing. The more we can have information on that, I think that the, the easier it is for people to onboard. And I think they, uh, they have new guides for authentication and authorization. And we also already saw that they have a guide for scope. So uh, it's always helpful to have good onboarding things. So I appreciate the work here uh, being done because you want to make it easy for people to come into Phoenix if we want to grow the community. Another thing that I thought was really interesting is the simplified layouts. I couldn't have told you this before, but it always there was always confusion in me when I had to like, okay, this is the root layout, this is the app layout, like when do I, where do I change which one, right? You can put root layout, you can put layout, all these things. So they've kind of done away with that. And now you have a root layout and the app layout is just a uh, component, a function component, right? You define it like this. And then when you want to use it, you use layouts app, you know, here in this case, they're passing the flash. Uh, and in this case, it, it, they're using slots to include breadcrumbs. So that's actually pretty cool. It's sort of leaning more into the function component philosophy. And of course, you can have different layouts, right? Layout out, layout admin, all that stuff, because they're just function components. It removes a little bit of that magic of how do layouts actually work, I think, in, in practice. So I think that's a cool change. Uh, and here's, for example, the, you know, they're showing the example of the breadcrumbs um, in action. So that's cool. I think that's a neat change. And finally, this is not a new change, apparently, but it's new to me. And there's the ability to launch a new uh, Phoenix application with with new.phoenixframework.org. You can see it right here. There's a curl command that will just launch a new Phoenix application for you. <laughs> I thought that was really cool. Again, I don't know how, how uh, recent this is. This says they launched this several months ago. I missed it, but it's cool that this is here and it helps you try out Phoenix 1.8. I hope you like it.